this is my new bed or my old bed because it's kind of old maybe if we had a little more light you could see it better but this is my bed I have the uh, lights like the teenagers do on YouTube because I was going to show it on YouTube. Don't normally have them going. If I can like, turn them on. Show you some of the carvings a little bit. You can see you can see some on the upper post. Well, this bed has been in the family for I guess I'm the fifth generation to own it. Uh, it belonged originally to my great great grandparents and passed to my great grandmother and my grandmother and to my father and then to me. What is it, Tilly? Morel? Morel what? Come here, come here. Be in the video. Ah! You can hang out or you're gonna run off and embarrass me. best that we can tell about this bed is that it was built in the 1830s. That it is American made, probably in the Philadelphia region, but sold to the southern market. It's made of walnut and <clears throat> there are three stories that have come down in the family about this bed. It is not possible for more than two of them to be true, and it's quite likely that none of them are true. Morel? Morel. Yeah. One story, and this is the one I give the most credence to, is that it was purchased at the marriage, or perhaps part... Now, <laughs> had to feed the cat. Um, where was I? Ah, I think that this bed probably was purchased at the marriage or perhaps part of the dowry of my great-great-grandmother, Eliza Macbeth. Macbeth. Let's see if we can get her. That's her. That's Eliza. This was her bed when she married. When she married. When she married him. This would have been about 1832. And I think that's probably the truth. Now another story that was told about this bed is that Abraham Lincoln slept in it. This would have been about 1829, probably. Abraham Lincoln was 19 years old, floating logs down the Mississippi River, and stayed at my great-great-grandparents' house. Being a guest, 
he would have been given the guest room. And this was the bed in the guest room. I kind of doubt that because in 1829 he wasn't president, he wasn't famous, he was some kid off the river. You're not going to put him up in the in the fancy room, you're going to let him sleep in the barn, you know. So I, I kind of doubt it, but that's an old story. And uh, the best thing you could say in favor of it is that Southerners were not of that era of the uh, Civil War era were not too happy to say that they had a personal connection to Abraham Lincoln. The third story, and I think this is very interesting, is that it was a gift to the family from Dr. Cox, who was a neighbor. Dr. Cox is an interesting per uh, person who, let's see, how do I tell the story of Dr. Cox? Uh, Dr. Cox was an Irish, I believe, surgeon who signed up as a ship's surgeon. Really shouldn't do this extemporaneously. I suppose I should script it. Uh, Dr. Cox was an Irish, I believe, surgeon on a slave ship. They stopped in Africa, and he ventured off into the jungle and encountered some peril. There are various versions of that story, but his life was saved by a young man, a young African. This fellow saved his life. And it turned out that this young man was a prince was the son of the local king. And of course, Dr. Cox was quite grateful. He quit his seagoing career on the slave ship and settled first in Virginia and worked his way towards the Mississippi River. Many years later, he was surprised to discover that the man who had saved his life was now a slave on a plantation. He thought it was terrible and tried to purchase the man's freedom, but the owner would not sell because the prince was uh, so knowledgeable and efficient that he had become essentially a foreman, a manager of the plantation and was too valuable to sell. So he couldn't purchase his freedom. His son was incensed and went to the man and said, write, write a letter to your father, the king, and tell him what has happened to you. So the man wrote out some things and, and no one could read them. They, they, it was scribbles, they figured it was African. It wasn't African. He had written out verses from the Quran. They sent the letters to Africa. They sent them to the wrong place, to the entirely wrong kingdom, but to a Muslim kingdom. And they read the letters and realized that this man is being held as a captive in the South and pressured the United States government to release him. And the government put pressure on the landowner and he was eventually given his freedom and allowed to return home and that would be a happy story except for the fact that he did not ever quite make it home and died in the journey back such is the story of Dr. Cox and the African Prince there's a movie they made about it you can Look that up if you're interested. And this bed may have been given as a gift to the family from Dr. Cox. Well, it can't both be part of Eliza's dowry and a gift to the family. And it's not very likely that Abraham Lincoln slept in it, though it's, oh, 
almost possible. Uh, all you can really say is that it's it's a uh, hundred and eighty year old, getting very close to uh, a two century old bed, and uh, that it did belong to my great grandparent, great great grandparents, and now it's our bed, my wife and I. Uh, it used to be in the front room of my grandmother's house, and when I was about 18 and kicked out of high school, uh, I went to live with my grandmother, and this was my bed. This was the bed I slept in uh, when I was 18. And now, it's the bed I sleep in today.